is the news and talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Yeah. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right, right now. now. All right, 2.03 the time. I'm Rick Roberts. This is the Court of Public Opinion, the Rick Roberts Show. Your voice, your opinion, your attitude, unless you've walked off your job. Sure, kids are doing it in schools. You ought to be able to do that. It's life. Yeah, I don't like something. I'm just going to walk out. It's walkout day Um, all around the country uh, for these kids that are protesting let me let me break this down for you because we're going to go to take you to New York in just a second. Steve Kastenbaum with uh, Westwood One is covering this. Let me break this down. This is exactly, you know, they may moan and groan and wring their hands and pull their hair and howl at the moon, politicians, that is. This is exactly what they wanted. This is exactly exactly what all uh, politicians wanted, including the right, to some degree. They wanted, and they have succeeded, in bringing forth a generation that believes the United States federal government is the answer to all their problems. Uh, The U.S. government can only increase in size and scope by what? For the U.S. government to grow and get bigger and bigger and bigger, it can only do that if more people are dependent on it. Over one-third of Americans are on some type of government assistance. Some legitimately, some simply living off the dole. But the U.S. government, the federal government, the mentality... The way that political machine works is let's get bigger. Let's become more powerful. Let's, uh, we need the ability to lord over more individuals. And you can only do that. You can only increase in size and scope by making more people dependent on government. I don't care who's sitting in the Oval Office, Republican, Democrat, independent, best of breed, doesn't matter to me. It's the same for everybody. That's the way the entity works. It works by getting more and more and more and more people dependent on it. Well, congratulations, federal U.S. government. You did it. You know, we've been turning out kids from public schools that can barely read and write at an eighth grade level. But now the ultimate thing has happened. The the thing the federal government wanted all along, which was we need to graduate students that believe Government is the answer to their problems. If we can do that, if we can graduate a kid from public school believing that if they have a problem, if they will trust us with their very lives, then they get a blank check. Sky's the limit. And what have you heard since that horrific school shooting in Florida? The politicians have failed us. Uh, We need the the government to step in. You haven't protected us. You haven't. That's all you've heard. You haven't heard about solutions. You haven't heard about, well, why don't we try this? You haven't heard, well, maybe uh, in this city we should do that. All they've done is look toward D.C. and start screaming, the politicians didn't work for us. They failed us. Too many kids have died. And you know what? The left is more than happy to trot out there and sing the same song. Do you see this? Do you see what's going on? It's not about gun control. And not to diminish the seriousness of it, it's not really about school shootings. It's not about the NRA, never was. It's about getting people reliant and dependent on government. And for the first time, For the first time in all of these school shootings, and I go back to Columbine, I actually, the same day that shooting happened, I had one of the students 
that had a gun pointed at him on my show. His parents called me and asked me if I would talk to him. They thought it would be therapeutic. I said, sure. Uh, the gun jammed. The kid he was underneath the desk with was shot and killed. None of those kids came out and said, the government should have protected us. The politicians of this nation failed us. What are you going to do, Washington? Help us. I, I, even Steve Kastenbaum from Westwood One interviewed a kid, I'm 18, I can vote now, and I'll vote these politicians out that aren't keeping us safe. What? Keeping us safe? The federal government can't even agree to what they're going to have for lunch with each other, let alone keep anybody safe. Tell me the last time you remember a national movement by young people saying the government is not helping us. We need politicians to keep us safe. The the federal government in D.C. needs to do more. What more? What? what? It, it has come to fruition. The government, which is really a machine, there's a mechanic, uh, mechanics to it. And if you're there, you know what I mean. I'm not talking about going to Lincoln's uh, memorial or any of that. I'm talking about going behind that and working there, seeing the people. Three blocks from the nation's capital is the worst ghetto you've ever seen in your life. Not working out for them too well, is it? The schools have 12-foot fences with barbed wire around them literally a half mile from the nation's capital. Yeah, government's not uh, working out too well there, is it? Yet they succeeded in bringing the American people, by virtue of our youth, to our knees. That was the plan. We can't get bigger. We can't be uh, more powerful. We can't have more impact in the daily lives of American unless... They depend on us more, unless they need us. And we have just convinced a whole generation of people that are getting ready to graduate. The only way to stay safe is with the government. The only way to succeed is with the government. The only way that we'll ever get any help is through uh, political action at the governmental level. It worked. It worked. Didn't happen overnight, didn't happen in a year, didn't happen in two or three years, didn't happen in a decade. It's been a slow progression to where kids are protesting the deaths of 17 of their classmates by what? By what are they doing? Are they asking law enforcement for more help, the state for more help, the city for more help, having meetings with the schools, how to make their schools safer? No, they're screaming that, The government needs to help them. Politicians have failed them. There's not a damn politician breathing air right now that could make you any safer. And they don't know it. All right. Uh, 211 The Time. Steve Kastenbaum with Westwood One will be with me from New York. uh, And we'll take your calls. 1-800-288-9227. 1-800-288-WBAP. What's it like in New York? What's going on on the walkout day? You'll find out in just a couple minutes. All right, uh, 16 minutes after the hour. Glad you're along. Uh, Your afternoon drive for Dallas, Fort Worth, and of course, uh, anywhere you happen to be listening coast to coast, it's toll free. 1-800-288-WBAP, 1-800-288-9227. Well, this is the walkout day, and of course, I just gave you my opinion. Uh, For the facts, uh, what's going on in New York? Let's go to Steve Kastenbaum with Westwood One. Steve, how you doing? I'm doing well. A cold, uh, windy day here uh, in the streets of the city, so I apologize if you hear some wind uh, here as I'm uh, talking with you about the events here in the city today. Not a problem, Steve. Um, I'm hearing kids, uh, thousands of kids took part in this. They did. Here in New York, it was um, pretty much citywide in all five boroughs. You heard chants of Save the Children rising up from uh, the streets uh, at high schools. Uh, You know, we have the largest education system, the largest public school system in the nation, 1.1 million students. And hundreds of thousands of high schoolers walked out today at 10 a.m. 
uh, and uh, held these rallies across uh, the city. Uh, and they went back into school uh, after about an hour or so. Uh, did you say hundreds of thousands? Yeah, when you tally up uh, all the high schools, you know, we have about 300,000 high schoolers in New York uh, alone. You know, it's uh, uh, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th graders. So when you tally them all up, you've got uh, more than 300,000 high school students in the five boroughs of New York City. I don't know that every single one of them took part in the walkout, but it seems like just about every single high school in the city uh, had a participation in some way or another. And it was peaceful, I assume? Yeah, it was. Um, In in lower Manhattan, there was a a high school that uh, specializes in teaching leadership that uh, saw some elected officials, including the governor, joining them uh, in Brooklyn, where I am at. We had a big rally with thousands of high schoolers at uh, Brooklyn Borough Hall uh, at Edward R. Murrow High School in Brooklyn. Uh, The mayor joined students there. uh, And it was very peaceful. Yes. Uh, I, you know, I have to ask because, you know, we're hearing the same thing all over the country. Uh, the politicians have failed us. Uh, what is government going to do? Um, has anyone tabled a, uh, a solution uh, or is it just facing toward D.C. trying to figure out what uh, is going to happen next? The sense that I got here, and I can't speak for other cities, uh, but uh, I did see, you know, a common theme in the headlines – Uh, being that, you know, students everywhere are just saying uh, enough is enough. We want to go to school and not have to worry about these issues concerning safety. We want to be in safe environments. That seemed to be uh, the common thread. I mean, yes, there was a lot of talk about guns and about gun legislation, but it seemed like, you know, the overriding issue was that students feel that they, you know, have been let down by the leaders across the United States because they don't feel like they're in a safe environment today. Uh, well, that, that seems to be the point, or the rallying point at least. What about the po- uh, the politics of this thing? Uh, Paul, you said some uh, political leaders, including the mayor, showed up. Uh, what, what was their position? Yeah, they certainly, uh, obviously, there is a political aspect to this. And, and you know, these uh, uh, leaders in here in New York State are, are very pro-gun legislation. We have some strict gun laws in New York State and even stricter ones here in New York City. And so they are very pro new gun legislation uh, when it comes to the mayor, when it comes to the governor and other elected officials in New York. So that that definitely played into these events. And and those politicians were calling on Washington, D.C. to, uh, you know, at least have a conversation about new gun laws and uniform gun policies across the United States. All right. Finally, Steve and I do. We're talking with Steve Kastenbaum with Westwood One uh, News. He is uh, live from New York. You can hear the wind uh, blustering there, and it's uh, quite cold, I guess. Uh, Steve, uh, the next step, the next move I'm hearing is a march on Washington. What do you know about that? Yeah, I'm hearing that as well. Uh, You know, it's interesting uh, because something like that requires a lot of organization, and um, I'm not quite sure uh, who, who would be the groups behind that? You know, who, who would organize such an event? Who would be applying for the permits and that sort of thing? Uh, I think a lot of those questions are up in the air at this point. Uh, the, these types of uh, walkouts, uh, some of them were organic in nature. You know, the, sure. it, was, it was a student-led movement in many, in many instances at many schools. And, uh, you know, they, they worked with their school administrators to make it happen. Uh, but when it comes to having a march in Washington, that requires a lot of organization, right? And a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, responsibility taking when it comes to liability and other things like that. So um, I'm not sure who would be at the forefront of that. Uh, you're absolutely correct. A lot of people have, uh, have theorized there must be someone or some organization behind this. Uh, a 15-year-old doesn't organize a march on Washington in the study hall. Um, right. <laughs> yeah. Although, you know, there have been through the years, you know, um, spontaneous grassroots movements on Washington. But when you start talking about large scale events that attract, uh, you know, a million or more people to Washington, D.C., then that does involve uh, uh, a need for organization at the top. Uh, Steve, great report and bringing it to us here in Dallas. Uh, Steve Kastenbaum, Westwood One News. Steve, uh, hope to talk to you soon, my friend. Always a pleasure. Thank you. All right. Uh, you know, this is uh, this is what what we're talking about. I mean, there is a conversation going on in Washington. I don't think the students are listening because they have not been, how do I say this politely? I think this entire thing, um, 
to, to some degree, is being orchestrated by the left. Because the conversations are going on, have been going on. Almost since the gun smoke cleared, conversations have been going on. Ted Cruz uh, has been uh, talking with people constantly about this. Another caller described this shooter as someone who wants to kill people. And yet, in that instance, the FBI did not even open an investigation on it. Why not? Senator, I share your frustration, I share your anger, and I share your concern that this doesn't happen again. Nobody followed up and called the local cops. Do you know this guy? No, sir. Yeah, the government's going to take care of you, all right. (laughs) I mean, you and I know because we're adults. We have benchmarks in our lives. We have high watermarks. We have life experience. Uh, some more than others, um, but we've been there, all right? We've been around the barn a time or two, even at night when we had to feel our way. Um, these are kids. These are kids. How much life experience do they have? They are perfect, perfect uh, for being manipulated by the left. Now, the, the left's goal is to get rid of all guns. You and I both know that. Uh, but all I'm hearing is, You failed us. As politicians, you failed us. Government didn't serve us. We've been... Stop! Some adult needs to walk into the room and say, excuse me, government can't protect you. You are your own first responder in any given situation, and then hopefully within four or five minutes, law enforcement can get there. D.C. can't do anything for you. If you don't believe that... Go to a DMV on a Thursday afternoon and tell me how much faith you have in the government being organized to to help you, to save you, to do anything for you. All right, we're going to take your calls in just a second. Um, Eric uh, Bushman is standing by the very latest breaking news, and we'll check your afternoon drive as it begins to get uh, heated up out there. And You know what? Good news for the 18-wheelers. They were all in a line in the middle lane today. People could get by on the left, get by on the right. It wasn't, you know, some uh, some idiot in a four-wheeler trying to zip back and forth. That's what happens when there are three abreast. So, good job, 18-wheelers. Nice job. They were not on I-30. Yeah. Well, they were on I-30. They yeah, were uh, and I know lines. it's absolutely 100% because of this show. Yeah. Uh, 225 the time. I'm Rick Roberts. Your call straight ahead. <laughs> All right, 2.33 the time. Welcome to the Court of Public Opinion, the Rick Roberts Show. Glad you're along. Uh, Toll free anywhere, 1-800-288-WBAP, 1-800-288-9227. You know, there are many forms of child abuse, many. As a child advocate for the better part of 25 years on on my shows, I, I can testify to that. And we're seeing a new form of child abuse. I'm not calling 17 and 18 year olds children, but in many ways they are gauging the lack of life experience. Chuck Schumer, his reputation precedes him. Would you like to hear a form of child abuse? Would you like to hear that? We'll repeal and repeal. Would you, would you like to hear (laughs) a form of child abuse? Um, by Chuck Schumer, because quite honestly, uh, when I first heard this, I had to listen to it again. Uh, you wonder why the kids keep calling for, uh, for someone to help them in Washington. You, you wonder why, why they keep looking to government to save them. Well, it's very simple. They're being manipulated, choreographed, if you will, by those on the left. Listen to a form of child abuse as Chucky Schumer speaks to already traumatized kids about how he believes they can be helped. It's amazing. All right, I'll get to that in just a second. First, I want to get to your calls. Uh, let's go to uh, Maria in Euless. Maria, thank you for waiting. How you doing? Are you with me? Yes, sir. Okay. 
Um, I said, thanks for taking my call. You bet. Um, I have a question, but before I go into it, I was going to say, I've raised two boys, one that was a Marine and been a policeman for the last 10 years, and the other one is double majoring in college. And they both went through the era of Columbine and all that. And I know this problem's getting really bad, but they've been raised with the mentality like I was by a Marine, Force Recon, 12-year Marine, where you take care of yourself in this life. But I sympathize with these kids. But I'm kind of wondering, with you just now opening up with uh, this Chuck Schumer encouraging this behavior, why aren't our representatives on uh, the Republican side diffusing it And the reason I ask is because I was sitting there thinking that they shouldn't be putting the blame on the NRA and they shouldn't be looking for the government's help. Shouldn't this be school district level? Shouldn't it be state level? Of course, of course. I used used to do budgets. I'm telling you, this is is by design. This is by Mm -hmm. design, Maria. Uh, There's nothing happenstance about this. Uh, This is by design. Uh, to try and get these kids. Uh, well, number one, 2018 is historic. For the first time, kids turning 18 and 19, voting age, surpass baby boomers. Um, it's a huge potential voting block. Huge. Um, Hillary already pretty much uh, wiped out uh, white married women yesterday. Um to tap in to the millennial voting block would be huge for the left. For the first time in history this year, new voters, those turning 18, surpass the number of baby boomers. And Chuck Schumer is not going to let that go to waste. Every time the vice-like grip of the NRA on the necks of some of these politicians has succeeded... But this time it won't. You want to know why? It won't. Because we have you. And together, we're going to win. We're going to win. We're going to win. That's a form of child abuse as far as I'm concerned. These kids have no life experience, very little life experience, and here is a professional politician using them for political purposes. Um, Once again, I want you to to listen, and then I'm going to get to your calls, but listen critically. This is a politician that should know better. He's taking young, fertile minds and trying to give them something to rally around. First thing out of his mouth is the NRA. Why are we going to win? Because of you. And, of course, they cheer. This is a form of child abuse as far as I'm concerned. I, I, I can't describe it any other way. It's not about uh, we're at odds on legislation or we have different viewpoints. I mean, that's fine. And if you listen to my show with any regularity, you know that I'm open to, uh, to all viewpoints legislatively. And I let all viewpoints on the air. That's not what this is. This is taking a bunch of kids and rallying them around a political cause that you have maneuvered, choreographed, and he is using them and will use them for political purposes. Listen, Chuck Schumer. Every time the vice-like grip of the NRA on the necks of some of these politicians has succeeded... But this time it won't. You want to know why? It won't. Because we have you. And together, we're going to win. We're going to win. We're going to win. Pathetic. Absolutely the lowest form of politics, the seamy underbelly of American politics using your kids to achieve achieve that which they cannot achieve on their own. That, as far as I'm concerned, that's child abuse. Uh, Fred in Bridgeport. Fred, thank you for waiting. How you doing? Oh, pretty good, Rick. How about you? Doing well, thank you. My wife and I used to own a pest control company in Arlington back in the 80s. And when we first started out, 
we were broke. We'd take money from anybody. So I put in a bid to HUD, Housing and Urban Development, to do the projects at four times the going rate, and they accepted because no one else would go out there. The police won't drive through these places. They won't even drive by these places. And I had a key to every door. My employees would now, tell now, me. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What, what places are you talking about? The projects. Oh, the PJs. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And my employees would tell me, I don't care if you fire me. I'm not going out there. So I did them by myself for three years because we needed the money. I could tell you stories that you wouldn't believe, so I'm not even going to tell you. Well, I, I would believe you because one of my many part-time jobs going to college was serving FEDs, forcible entry detainers, um, in what was known as Kerr Village and Hamilton Courts. And you're right. Buses didn't run. Pizza didn't deliver. Um, but I would serve uh, these FEDs in the projects. I had to wait till night because if they saw a white guy, they wouldn't answer the door. And at that time, you could serve anybody above the age of 14 that was a, a resident of the of the place. Um, and, yeah, I've uh, I've been shot at. I've been uh, – uh, the, the most serious thing was a little lady. I mean, she must have been five foot tall, came at me through the screen with a butcher knife. I, it, uh, but, it, but it, hey, it was good money back, back in the day. It was like $18 for every one served. Um, you loved it when they were in jail because all you had to do was go up to jail. How you doing, jailer? You know, here's a butterfinger, let you in and serve the guys. Um, I quit that pretty, pretty, pretty quick. Uh, I made pretty good money, but man, um, no, no thanks. And what they were, people said, well, you shouldn't have been doing that anyway. Ex you know, exploiting, uh, the problems of others. Well, actually these were three bedroom townhomes built by the government projects uh, and I think they were charging them at the time $110 a month, and they were behind a year. So, it, you know, sorry. Um, I, uh, I'm, you check in at the sheriff's department, get your, uh, get your FEDs, get your weapon, and go away. Um, and like I said, it was good money, but I would never suggest it, not even for a part-time job. Um, a little off track, but... Uh, when it comes to Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi and all the rest, they're they're using your kids. If you don't wise your kids up to what's going on, especially, what have you said to your kids about this Florida shooting? I mean, it, it, it appears, based on what we've read and what we've heard, there were plenty of warnings. The NRA had nothing to do with it, and the government can't change any of it. Here in New York, chants of Save Our Kids rose from all five boroughs as hundreds of thousands of high school students walked out of their classrooms at 10 a.m. Alana Leeds is a senior at Edward R. Morrow High School here in Brooklyn. Today, we are fighting for change because we refuse to become a new set of statistics. Mayor Bill de Blasio attended their walkout and rally. I appreciate you and I appreciate students all over the city and all over this country. For standing up for change. At Brooklyn's Borough Hall, another rally with over a thousand students like Drew Myers. Yeah, I'm voting. I'm 18. It's time to let politicians know. Politicians have failed us. Steve Kastenbaum in Brooklyn, New York. All right. Uh, we need change. Didn't that, uh, that hope and change thing ring hollow last time around? You're not hearing one solution being asked for. I'm 18. I can vote. I'm going to let the politicians know. Know what? They can't do anything in D.C. Where did you get the idea that government, at any level for that matter, or politicians were going to be able to keep you safe? Oh, that's right. You went to public school for 12 years. That's where you got it. And the left, you know, if you heard my promo, you know, it's uh, – basically said Tillerson's out Pompeo's in this is my I couldn't care less look but I do care about what the next tactic the next strategy of the left is and this is it along with shaming evangelical voters well if you can't be a Christian and vote for Trump what's wrong with you in 2018 the American electorate will cross this historic threshold 
and it's going to reshape. Listen to this talk show host for just a second. I'm not trying to be demonstrative. I'm trying to be factual. It's going to reshape the political balance of power for a long time to come. For the first time, the very first time, millennials this year, those turning 18 in the millennial uh, age range, will pass baby boomers as the largest generation of Americans eligible to vote. Um, There's no getting around that. That transition is going to end a remarkable, uh, I had no idea until I read it, a remarkable four decades of dominance for baby boomers. No more. Not anymore. Um, they have been, baby boomers have been the largest generation of eligible voters since 1978 when they surpassed what is affectionately referred to as the greatest generation or the GI generation raised during the depression. So from 78 to 2018, baby boomers were the largest demographic. No more. Starting this year, it's millennials. And if you add those that turn 18, voting age, this year, you're talking about reshaping the political landscape. And that has not been lost on the left. That's exactly what this is about. Uh, let's go to uh, Dale in Weatherford. Dale, thank you for waiting. I appreciate it. How you doing, Dale? Yes, sir. Doing good. Thank you, Rick, for taking my call. Yes, sir. I just wanted to make a comment that this is no new trick by the left. I mean, they did it a long time ago with the African uh, African American community and the Latino community, convincing that the uh, right side, the Republican side, were all a bunch of racists. And uh, people like Jesse Jackson have been race pimps their entire lives. And if they weren't, would he have a job? No. no. It, as a matter of if, if you go to wbap dot com, go to the Rick Roberts page. Uh, I think you get there by going to shows and then my name and that. Uh, I go through the history of Democrats, Republicans, and racism. Uh, A lot of people didn't realize the KKK uh, was an umbrella group of Southern Democrats to harass uh, what they called radical Republicans, those that wanted blacks to have the right to vote and citizenship and so on, and to harass freed black men out of their states. Um, You know, LBJ signed that uh, historic Civil Rights Act. You remember that. Well, may not remember it, but you know about it. Um, and of yes, course, sir. everybody said, oh my God, he's a, you know, he's a savior for the black people. Well, you know, he may have done the right thing for the wrong reason because he said, as chronicled by his autobiographer, uh, as soon as he signed that, I'll have those in words voting for Democrats for the next 200 years. And he was almost right. Um, you know, the, the, the party of racism is, was, and remains to be uh, Democrats, period. Absolutely. I mean, you look at their inner communities and the inner cities. Where have they been the last 50 years? In shambles as they were when they started. In poverty and the, you know, the job rates, everything that goes on in those communities. And it's the same thing they're doing with these kids. They're parading these kids out to push a cause. Yep. They don't care one way or another what happens to these kids. That's why you hit on it earlier. There are no solutions because they don't have any. Because any solution that would work doesn't go in line with their agenda or their beliefs. Well, we're, you know, here again, we're talking about high school kids. We're the big people. We're supposed to say, okay, this is the way it's going to work. Yes, you're, you have a right to your opinion and to be vocal about it and so on. Um, but we need to take the reins here. Yeah, you don't get the, you know, the horses going as fast as they can go, bouncing down a country road and hand them to a, a teenager and say, the reins to a teenager and said, here, you drive. Uh, it doesn't work that way. We need to talk about school safety. We need to talk about the relevant issues. And they're not the same in Florida as they are in Montana or in Bakersfield or in upstate New York. They're all different based on the geographic location. Uh, We got a lot of work to do, but using, choreographing, manipulating kids is not the way we need to go. I appreciate it very, very much. It, it Luck, here's the thing. He's right. He's right about uh, the Democrats 
and how they manipulated the black vote. And finally, the light went on, and uh, the black community said, whoa, wait a minute. You know, I was born in the morning, but not this morning. You've been talking about you're going to bring jobs back to the inner city. You're going to clean up the infrastructure you're going to do. There are no white kids going down to the projects, urinating in the hallways, spraying graffiti and selling crack on the corner. There are no, no, no white kids doing that. Um, you got people in the black community that need to be addressed, that need to be turned in. Um, what happened to all that money in Washington that was supposed to go to the black community? We're going to, you know, we're going to take care of you. We're going to bring the businesses back. Nobody's going to bring a business back to some place that looks like a war zone. And people have to live there. People have to live there for crying out loud. You know, and then you, Obama comes up with these programs. Well, there's too many black people in jail, so let's ignore some crimes. No, people have to live with that. Where the, where's the money for the infrastructure? Where, where are the schools being refurbished? Where are the businesses you promised? Well, I'm going to give you a, I'm going to give you a fifteen dollar minimum wage for what? There aren't any jobs for crying out loud. You know, the only thing is those activists correctly pointed out that Obama gave the black community was a minimum wage job for something that doesn't exist in their community and abortion on demand. Well, thank you very much. This is the news and talk of Texas. Now it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Yeah. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. One month ago, 17 Americans, 14 children, were killed at Stoneham. Let us remember them. Let us remember the thousands upon thousands of children who have died at the hands of gun violence. All right, there you go. Uh, the, uh, the newest strategy for the Democrats, uh, and it's a smart one, is to motivate voter turnout by millennials. Uh, for the first time in history, millennials now make up more of the uh, political landscape do, than do the baby boomers. Uh, it's never happened before. Um, let me get to some of your calls, and I'll tell you why this is important. It's a steady shift in the electorate's composition. It should, by all accounts, benefit Democrats. The baby boom, which is predominantly white, um, has drifted uh, toward the GOP. Both Mitt Romney and Donald Trump carried about three-fifths of white older than 45 people. Exit polls found, by contrast, when compared to older generations, the millennials, the millennial generation, which is more racially diverse, I don't know uh, what the numbers are there, less religious, um, they vote more often for Democrats. They express more opposition to Trump, profess more liberal views, especially on social and environmental issues. And these Democrats aren't going to let that go to waste. That's exactly why you've got Chucky e. Schumer out here uh, with this national day of walkout. Hundreds of thousands of kids in New York alone, they don't know what they want. They just know that they're looking for the government to make it happen. Well, you and I both know, because we've been around a little bit longer, it doesn't work that way. They don't. That's not the way they'll vote. Uh, let's go to Eric in Dallas. Eric, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Eric? Hello, Eric. I'm good today. Uh, hey, uh, Rick. Uh, good afternoon. Thanks for taking my call. You bet. Uh, a couple of things, if I could. First, uh, you were just kind of talking about it. The kids who are walking out... Uh, and the, the guy you were talking to on the phone earlier, the tenants said nothing, you know. Uh, they just said, we want change. We want something done. We're, uh, we're tired of it. And we were fed up. But fed up with what? And tired of what? And what do they want done? You well, know, they want they, they, they don't know. Done. They, they don't know. But, I mean, think about it. It works. Uh, Barack Obama got eight years in, in the White House off what? Hope and change. Hope for what? Change to what? 
Nobody ever knew. We still don't. Absolutely. And so, you know, when you, if you try to ask them, well, what do you want them to do? They're like, well, you know, something. Well, that, well the, that, the that Democrats be, are there to the schools, answer it. I guess. Democrats are there to answer that for them, just like Chuck Schumer. He was speaking in mm-hmm. front of a bunch of those kids. Uh, it's the NRA. We're going to change it in Washington. We're going to get these politicians to do what they need to do to protect you, and we're going to win because we have you. Uh, I mean, I'm paraphrasing, exactly. but that's about it. So that's what they leave exactly. with. Yeah, and that was kind of the second thing I was going to say, is you notice how Chuck Schumer and the other Democrat liberals, uh, they'll say the NRA is the cause of this. They'll say these politicians who are in the vice grip of the NRA, as if if the NRA wasn't giving them money or pushing them, those politicians obviously would vote the other way on all gun control issues. They would, Of course they would be in favor of super strict gun control, except the, N- the evil NRA is doing this. And so they, you don't hear them say these politicians who are, you know, hung up on defending this, you know, our Second Amendment constitutional rights. They say it's the NRA. And so we're going to win, not we're going to win because you're going to help us trample on the Constitution. It's we're going to win because you're going to help us defeat the evil NRA. Well, you're right on on several levels. First of all, let let me make this abundantly clear to all those that would listen. These kids don't hate the Constitution. They don't know anything about it. They don't know about the Bill of Rights, first ten amendments to the Constitution. They don't know what people went through to create that document. They don't know that uh, this country was founded on biblical principles and, and constitutionality in, in just about every area of life. They don't hate the Constitution. They don't know anything about it. They haven't been taught about the Constitution, Declaration of Independence. They don't know. Why? Because it wasn't in the government's best interest for them to know. You can't miss what you never knew you had. I'll say it again. When it comes to the rights and privileges, uh, I would I would guarantee you that illegals coming in from other countries know more about our Constitution than do our own kids in high schools. Why? Because the government doesn't. Well, that's what the Common Core is all about. Common Core is not, well, we're going to have the finest education anywhere. BS. You're trying to raise up a generation that won't push back. You're trying to raise up a generation that won't critically think. The more people that are dependent on government, the larger government grows. They don't hate the Constitution. They just don't know about the Constitution. As I said, you can't miss something you never knew you had. And that's the situation with kids graduating today. And you can send me all the nasty uh, email about, I'm a teacher for 25 years and blah, blah, blah. This isn't about you. This is about the system. And if you're a teacher that thinks the education system works, then I got to question your credibility as a teacher. So let's not even go there. You've got... Chucky Schumer, one of the most visible, recognizable Democrats, out here saying, hey, we'll get the NRA out of the way. We're going to win because we have you. They know exactly, exactly what they're doing. The impact of this change won't work if millennials continue to vote at a lower rate than their elders, especially in the midterms. Millennials are on track to soon surpass baby boomers. It happens this year. They will be the largest generation of potential voters, and experts have already warned that because of their lower turnout, it may still be some time until they exceed their elders among actual voters. The Democrats are making that happen right now, and they're using 17 dead teenagers to make it happen. All right, 317 the time. I'm Rick Roberts. This is the Court of Public Opinion on News Talk 820 WBAP. Hundreds of thousands of kids took to the streets in New York. New York alone on the National Walkout Day. But if there's any message I want this show to put out there today, it's 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 not about the kids. 
not about guns, certainly not about the NRA, not even about those 17 teenagers that were tragically killed. This is the new democratic strategy. They've lost the black vote for all the reasons the previous calls brought up. And by the way, you know, if you get a chance to share something you know, with a millennial, go to WBAP.com. Now, I don't make any money off this. There's not a profit line involved here. Um, it's information. And in this case, important information. Go to WBAP.com. Uh, on the front, it says shows, I think. Hit shows. My name will show up. Hit Rick Roberts. That's the podcast page. You can uh, listen to every hour of every show for the last hour, year and a half, if you want. Then there's some standalone audio, some, uh, you know, some things we've done in a briefer format. But scroll all the way to the bottom. All the way to the bottom. You'll see, and I'm again, I'm paraphrasing, but it says something about uh, the history of Republicans, Democrats, and racism. All right? You will, you will see who the racist party was, is, and continues to be. But more importantly, it's not about pointing fingers, oh, it's your fault. That doesn't even matter anymore. It's the process of how people are used by political parties. And you will see how the black community was used by the Democrats. Initially, it was covert racism, very covert, but it's explained post-Civil War. And then uh, what most commonly is referred to as the shift occurred when civil rights uh, started being passed. And then it was, okay, well, we can't be covertly racist anymore. So what we'll do is just come out in the open and make blacks as dependent on government as we possibly can, ensuring us of the same end result, their vote just for a different reason. And then it's, you know, just been the last couple of years where the blacks have backed off voting for Democrats. You know, somebody comes to your front door, I'm going to save you money, I'm going to get you a job, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. You know, they can only do that for about 50 years, and then after that you go, okay, this makes no sense. Remember when Trump said, hey, you got nothing to lose, try something different. And that's what he was talking about. That's what he was talking about. Now, kids, if you're a millennial, they're going to do the same thing to you. They are doing the same thing to you. The fact that they would do it out loud over something as tragic at this school, as a school shooting, um, it, it, it's just absolutely pathetic. But what better way to work your way into a millennial's wor world? Guns are bad. NRA is all about guns. Um, all guns spring forth from the loins of the NRA. We're going to get rid of that for you. We're going to keep you safe in school. That's exactly what they did with the black community. Exactly. They know government can't keep you safe. They know government can't do what you can do better. They know that government versus the private sector always loses as I said, if you want to see the efficiency of the government, go to the DMV. You just sit out in the car with a sandwich. Watch. You want those folks handling your health care? You, you want those folks keeping you safe? Why would you vote for those folks? And I'm talking about government in general. I'm not talking about just the Democrats or Republicans. It was not designed to do what the Democrats are promising it's going to do. It wasn't designed to do that. All right. Uh, I, I'm going to get off on a rant here. Let's go to Andy in Fort Worth. Andy, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Andy? Doing well, sir. Doing well. Listen, I I kind of have to disagree with your analogy and these kids. I don't think I think you're totally overestimating them. For them to go out on these marches and stuff, I, I just see it as a a one time thing. But to get to your conclusion on voting, I'm sorry from the kids that I've seen. And I'm a senior citizen. I'm 75, by the way. I've watched all this. Um, and the, the people that I see as the younger generation now in these schools and here in Dallas, I just don't think it's I Did you, let, let me ask, let me ask with all due respect, uh, because yeah. you, uh, 
Do you did you do you remember the protests and the walkouts and the, all the things that went on in the sixties? Yes, I do, and I lived in California then, Rick, and, and the stuff that was going on up in uh, oh, what was the school up in San Francisco, um, Berkeley, the little red school yeah. house up in Berkeley. Yeah, yeah. well, I mean, that's I, that's I where and, and, that's where our politicians came from. That's where liberalism sprung forth and put us in the mess we are right now. You know, with all due respect, because of your age and you've been around, I, I do respect that. But I, I fundamentally disagree with you. Um, you know, the 60s is where liberalism came from. And now we're fighting it tooth and nail, trying to keep the status quo for our kids. You know, and I'm not making this stuff up. I, I would ask, if you're so inclined, look at the States of Change Project if you get a chance. You know, they do a, a relatively good job of timelining this for you. You know, we didn't we didn't get the deficit that we've got. We didn't get the welfare state that we have. We didn't get any of this by accident. It was all well planned by liberals that took power in the 60s because people said it was a fad. It was passing. It'll go away. And those students became adults. And those students that became adults kept the main, same mindset. And then it infiltrated our school system, in our politics, in our governments at every level, city, county, state, and federal. That's why we're in the mess. If, if you believe this is a passing fad, forgive me, and as I say, with all due respect, you're laboring under a sad misconception. Just before the first millennials entered the electorate, voters under the age of 30 split almost evenly between the two parties. In the 2000 presidential election, in the three congressional elections from what, 98 through uh, be 2002? But as millennials have poured into the voting booth, the youth vote has sharply turned toward Democrats on both fronts. And it peaked with Obama's 66% support among voters under 30 years old in 2008. In 2016, we know what happened. Hillary Clinton struggled among young voters from, from the beginning. What happened? A dyed-in-the-wool socialist, Bernie Sanders, beat Hillary Clinton in the Democratic primary by a wider margin than Obama beat her in 2008. So if you think this is just something that's going to go away and they'll forget about it and go to the movies next week, uh, as much as I wish that were true, it is absolutely false. They are here. They're here to stay. They're being, uh, they're being energized by the Democrats. Even uh, Chucky e. Schumer, one of the most recognizable Democrats in D.C. What did we see? We saw many of them defect to third-party candidates during the general election. But even so, Trump carried only a little more than one-third of voters under 30, no better than Romney's meager performance. There it is for you. It's right there, Andy. I'm telling you right now, if you don't stop the Democrats from doing to the millennials what they did to the black communities, they got the black communities to vote for them almost 90-some percent for 50 years on promises. And that's it. Nothing more than promises. They don't have any better schools. They don't have any jobs. They don't have any infrastructure. They have no health care. The only thing they've got is abortion on demand. And you can thank a liberal for that. Here in New York, chants of Save Our Kids rose from all five boroughs as hundreds of thousands of high school students walked out of their classrooms at 10 a.m., Alana Leeds is a senior at Edward R. Morrow High School here in Brooklyn. Today, we are fighting for change because we refuse to become a new set of statistics. Mayor Bill de Blasio attended their walkout and rally. I appreciate you and I appreciate students all over the city and all over this country 
who are standing up for change. At Brooklyn's Borough Hall, another rally with over a thousand students like Drew Myers. Yeah, I'm voting. I'm 18. It's time to let politicians know. Politicians have failed us. Steve Kastenbaum in Brooklyn, New York. Every time the vice-like grip of the NRA on the necks of some of these politicians yeah. has succeeded. But this time it won't. You want to know why? It won't. Because we have you. And together, we're going to win. We're going to win. We're going to win. All right. Well, that's a pathetic example of child abuse as far as I'm concerned. Uh, no, they're not toddlers. Uh but they are children, nonetheless, based on their life experience and and uh, you know what they've been exposed to. That's uh, Chucky e. Schumer. We're gonna win. We're gonna say it with me. We're gonna win. Say say it, everybody, all we're together. Gonna we're, we're, win. We're, we're gonna win. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna win. going we're gonna, to win. What is it we're winning? I don't know. Me either. What are we? What are we fighting for? Yeah, we're fighting for that politician seat. Yeah. We're gonna win. Ladies and gentlemen, you are witnessing. I wasn't around when the Democrats started pandering to the black community, started lying to the black community in order to garner their vote. You know, tell them anything. Uh, tell them, uh, I don't know, take them a turkey at Thanksgiving and a toy at Christmas. Uh, but get down there in the daylight. You don't want to be in that part of town after dark. Um, and we'll get their vote. And they did for 50 years. Until the activists smarted up saying, wait a minute, what, what, what is this? Now, a whole new voting group is in for the same type of treatment, the millennials. And they got some electorate power. They, they have some electorate power. There is no doubt, no doubt whatsoever. And I just gave you all the numbers, and I can cite the sources if you'd like. Chucky e. Schumer is uh, leaving no good crisis to go to waste we got 17 dead teenagers how many votes can we get out of that all right let's get to your calls let's go to chris chris in fort worth how you doing chris i'm good rick this is deplorable chris in fort worth Deplor <laughs> how you doing deplorable chris rick i am from that time when the democratic party um Pulled a good one on the black community. You know, Chucky e. Schumer said every time the clutches of the NRA, well, I escaped the clutches of the Democratic Party. One way that we're going to win is God back in school. Amen. Rick, there's an evil desire for America to be a government dependent, mindless, godless society, just like they did with the black community some time back. There is an article that says that there are 1.6 million abortions every year. 36% of the teenage pregnancies result in abortion. The same liberal cheerleader for the concern for human life cheerleads for abortion on demand. Rick, we're going to win by putting God back in school. Uh, you know, uh, anytime you say God, uh, you know, the, the liberals recoil uh, in, uh, in surprise, and uh, they're not very happy about it. Um, you know, what I said, what the country was founded on biblical principles, um, and those biblical principles work for everyone, all theologies, not just Christians, but everybody. Uh, we at least need to put that back in schools. Uh, we need to put those biblical principles back. There needs to be consequence for action. Uh, if somebody does something wrong, you don't indict the whole class for fear of hurting someone's self-esteem. You jerk them out of class, let the rest of the class go on and learn, and deal with a kid. Uh, I mean, this Rick, is not tough to figure out. If we don't, Rick, we're going to be a mindless society. Yep, we are. Uh, but more dramatic, more detrimental, and scarier to me is we're going to be a soulless society. Absolutely, Rick. Rick, keep doing a good job. Thank right, you. Chris, I appreciate it very much. But, of course, we've always got Nancy Pelosi to uh, to deal with, don't We're we? all moved by your eloquence and your fearless insistence okay, on action wait, wait, to wait, prevent— Wait, wait, wait. I got to—look. 
uh, just like Chucky e. Schumer, this is Nancy Pelosi talking to a bunch of kids, 15, 16, 17, maybe a couple 18-year-olds in there. I, wanna, I want you to listen to how Democrats are manipulating these teenagers. Listen. We're all moved by your eloquence and your fearless insistence on action to prevent gun violence. Thank you for bringing your urgency to this fight to the doorstep of America, the doorstep of the capital of the United States. What did she say? What, she didn't know about gun violence until uh, hundreds of thousands of kids showed up in the street? She wasn't aware of any of that? She didn't know anything? Nancy, Nancy, what are you talking about? Whether Orlando, San Bernardino, South Carolina, Las Vegas, Newtown, Sutherland Springs, Parkland, city streets, homes across the nation, there's been too much violence, too much heartbreak. All right. So I'm with you, kids. Uh, I know I look old and sound like I've lost my mind, uh, but I'm with you. That's step one. Wait for step two. Wait for step two. All right, at 3.45 the time, I got to give you something. I, I checked my email during the breaks, or I try to. I, I try to get to as many as I can. Um, you know, I, I realize that uh, I'm not going to get to them all um, anytime quick. Uh, but this is from JB. I guess his last name is something he doesn't want to reveal. Ha, 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 ha. You know when an email starts that way. You've got a Rhodes Scholar. Uh, you guys all worked up because you were scared of losing. You don't think those kids have anything to say, but you will hear from them loud and clear at the polling booths. Keep up the great show today. Ha, 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 ha. Uh, obviously, I'm dealing with a man of just superior intelligence. Uh, and then the next one, ha, 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 I am loving this show today. And the token black guy was a great touch. I hope he gets his check in the mail for calling in. This is great theater. You got going to, well, ha, 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 ha. Um, if you don't vote, that's the kind of moron wrapped in an idiot that's going to be running the country. And, and I can see why he aligns himself with, with the teenagers because from an intelligence factor, they're probably at the same level. But I'm guessing this guy's much older. Uh, that's the other side. That's the other side. And, and while it's okay to send, you know, infantile emails to a talk show host, you probably don't want those people running the country or having anything to say about anyone running the country. Uh, let's go to Carol in Hearst. Carol, thank you for waiting. Hey, good afternoon and Boomer Sooners. <laughs> there you go. How are you doing? <laughs> oh, I'm doing fine. And, hey, what I'm going to do is just a little tongue-in-cheek, but not really. All right. I was a high school teacher high school teacher for 20 years and college for a few years too. And kids will do anything, get out of school here. And, but what I'm telling you, if I were an administrator today, I would have put together a form that says I voluntarily, as of this day, give up my right under the second amendment to ever own or possess a firearm. <laughs> and then I would ask every student who wanted to leave every teacher, anybody who wanted to leave, sign it, date it, Social Security number, we'll send it to Washington, have your name put in that bank of somebody who cannot buy a firearm, and then you can legally get up and leave class, won't even have to make up the work. You know what? I would agree with that other than uh, you and I both know, you especially being a former teacher, uh, after these kids are out of school for a year, maybe two, they see the stub on their checkbook with all the deductions, they're going to yeah. grow out of a lot of this. Um, they will. The problem is uh, the Democrats aren't going to grow out of anything. Uh, right. You know, they their base is manipulating the vote, well, just like they did with the black communities for a half century. Uh, they have found a new voting block, which are young, immature, impressionable, easily uh, manipulated kids. And they're going right. to take the, they're going to use that to uh, 
uh, to every advantage. And, you know, if they're lucky, they'll end up like that dolt that emailed me a while ago. Um, uh-huh. They'll end up with yeah. somebody like that. Well, the thing is, the smart kids wouldn't walk out just on the chance that it might happen. The kids from the hood wouldn't because they're not going to give up that chance or get in a sh- position where they might not have a gun. And the kids who were hunters, they won't take off today. No. They wouldn't take the risk. So there's a block of kids who would say, hey, because uh, if that's in there, you know, yeah, hey, they could pull my name and, and find out I've, I've never done anything wrong, but I can't own the firearm. Well, so, you, you Carol, know. you know, as a former teacher, uh, one thing that remains consistent about young kids, and especially kids in school, peer groups, um, mm-hmm. cause a lot of pressure. Every kid wants to be a part of something bigger than themselves. So they yeah. glob on to just about anything. Um, and, but like I say, they do grow out of it. Well, with the exception of that one guy, JB, but, uh, I mean, that's what <laughs> those, those are the Democrats. Um, but uh-huh. w- what I'm saying is, is you need to send the message. Um, we need to send the message message collectively, uh, that you're being used, you're being manipulated. Um, you're being choreographed by Democrats for their own purpose. Uh, I mean, this is a form of child abuse as far as I'm concerned. Thank you to all of the Montgomery for your courage to stand up, speak out, and walk out. Okay, I'm going to hit that again. Um, This is Nancy Pelosi talking to the kids in Washington today. Thank you to all of the Montgomery County students for your courage to stand up, speak out, and walk out. All right, so there's Nancy Pelosi encouraging kids to walk out of class. That makes a lot of sense. That that makes perfect sense. Uh, Let's go to Kyle in Greensburg. Uh, I think it's Kansas, if I'm not mistaken. Kyle, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Kyle? I'm I'm good. Thank you for taking my phone call. Uh, Big fan of your station there. Thank you very much. <clears throat> um, my my question was so listening to to Chuck Schumer that you just played there, and listening to Nancy Pelosi. Um, wh- why don't the Republican Party have anybody like that speaking just as loudly for us as the Democrats seem to? I, I feel like these kids could have a more fair chance of making up their own minds if they heard both sides of the story. But it always seems like the Republican Party is always painted as you know the party. Nobody wants to be a part of for some reason, or just you know the, the evil party, if you will. And it's just well, yeah, little, I little can answer. Here and I can answer uh, it for you. Um, Republicans are really bad at this. That's why they've lost so much. Um, they're yeah. they're bad at responding. You know, they've got this. Uh, you know, oh my God, I don't want to lose one vote. I don't want to cause a ripple in the pond. Uh, the school shooting is still fresh on everybody's mind. I can't go out and speak against these kids. Which actually, if they did it right, they wouldn't be speaking against the kids. They would highlight the fact the kids are being re-victimized by the uh, opposition party. But so far, they haven't been able to figure that out. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So, uh, uh, good question and very fair question. And if you're uh, in Republican leadership listening to this talk show host, I get it. I get why you didn't jump out there initially. You know, the the horrificness of uh, what happened was uh, was pretty great. Okay, now it's time to handle yourself like a conservative. Speak out to these kids. Let them know they're being victimized, uh, once again, not by an active school shooter, by an active Democrat. And give the other side of the story. Because trust me, there are more than two sides to this story. You follow me? It, uh, it, it... Republicans? Man, I'm not even a Republican. I'm an independent. I left the Republicans when they left their conservative base under Bush. But, you know, I am a conservative. Republicans, you've you got to, dare I say this, I don't mean to be ugly, you got to grow a pair. you got to look at that. You know what's going on. You know these kids are being victimized. You know Nancy Pelosi and Chucky e. Schumer are playing into that uh, teenage mentality. For what? For political purposes. You got to stand up at some point and say, "Okay, enough time has passed, and kids, here's 
the realistic approach to this thing. Nobody from the NRA came and shot up those kids or that school in any of the school shootings. You know, they don't, uh, the NRA doesn't write and pass legislation. They make recommendations like anybody's free to do, including yourself, kids. Um, but looking to government to solve a problem is always a mistake. Always. You know, name me one time they've been able to do anything. You know, you're being used, and personally, I take it, uh, I take it uh, is, is almost a form of child abuse by these Democrats. I'm with you. Thanks for having the courage to walk out. Yeah, we need to get rid of the NRA. I mean, what, what is that? That has nothing to do with what you went through in that school in Florida. Nothing. But you're about to, I'll tell you the message that needs to be sent. You need to give them the timeline of what the Democrats did with the black communities. Now, just take out black and put in millennial, and you got the same thing over again. Would you like to know what they have to say about uh, AR-15s and school shootings? You'll hear that next. This is the News and Talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. The student speaker who was just at the podium said, this is not a day off. This is a civics lesson and how to get things done. And that has been the message. Okay, how to get things done. What's been done? What's been done? Well, maybe Chuck Grassley's got the idea. And today, I want to announce that I will be introducing the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School Memorial Act of 2018. This bill will provide funding to support Secret Service National Threat Assessment Center's efforts <laughs> to conduct cutting-edge research into the prevention of school violence. Oh, you mean you're going to create another bureaucracy on top of a bureaucracy? Well, maybe Cory Booker. Maybe Cory Booker's got the answer. We have agencies that have been been hamstrung on their ability to get common sense data. This is not a partisan issue. You don't need to be fair and balanced. People who are trying to keep guns out of the hands of, of folks who are trying to do ill they need data. They need research. They need access to information. Yep. And, and we're not seeing that. Well, yep. what does that got to do with kids? Well, what does any of that have to do with the schools or the states? Nothing. Uh, well, you know what? I bet you Dick Durbin. Dick Durbin, now, he's the guy that probably has the answer. What we have, sadly, are weak responses all around. And why? Well, in a m lucid moment, a couple weeks ago, the president identified it. Politicians are petrified by the National Rifle Association. Ah, that's it. In a lucid moment, the president got it right. It's about the NRA. That's what it is. Well, maybe the kids. Maybe the kids, you know, have so much information that I'm not giving them enough credit. Maybe that's it. If I want to see a change, I think it'd be that assault rifles and automatic weapons be taken away from the average person because it's way because at this point in time, it's way too easy to access one. OK, well, somebody needs to tell the kid that automatic weapons are not easily accessible to anyone. All right. Um, well, you know what? Maybe I'm being too critical. Maybe this teenage girl, maybe she's got the answer. It makes me feel empowered. It makes me feel that students can truly make a difference, and I think that that's one of the most important things I can feel today. Everybody has something to say, and they're finally getting to say it, and that's just amazing. Uh, I want to know who kept you from saying anything all along. Was there a law against students speaking out? You know what it is? I, I guarantee it. Nancy Pelosi. I don't have a lot to good to say about her, but Nancy Pelosi, she's probably got the answer. Thank you to all of the Montgomery County students for your courage to stand up, speak up, and walk out. Yeah, that's good. That's, that's what you want from one of your political leaders in D.C. Thank you for walking out of school. Yeah. Now, don't forget, I'm with you. Vote Democrat. Um, is, isn't that about right, Nancy? The American people overwhelmingly support common sense action to prevent the tragedy of gun violence. 
97% of Americans support strengthening background checks. Yeah, exactly. So, Nancy, why don't we do something different at a city, county, state level? Why do we need, why do we need the federal government creating more bureaucracies? Whether Orlando, San Bernardino, South Carolina, Las Vegas, Newtown, Sutherland Springs, Parkland, city streets, homes across the nation, there's been too much violence, too much heartbreak. Well, good. There's a news flash. We weren't aware of that. We, nobody knew that until Nancy said it. We're all moved by your eloquence and your fearless insistence on action to prevent gun violence. Thank you for bringing your urgency to this fight, to the doorstep of America, the doorstep of the capital of the United States. Yay, yay. And don't forget to vote Democrat. That's the next step. Uh, let's go to uh, Robert in Fort Worth. Robert, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Robert? Okay, enjoy your program, Rick. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I have several different things to talk about, but I'll try to shorten it up. You know, I agree with you on what Johnson did. He also, for his library, he condemned his neighbor's land, which was a small ranch. Johnson had a big one and made his own library there. There's other things where where the great society started, the blacks were involved, and there's a lot of stuff in it. But yet, the, you know, these children don't know to go back and study civics. They don't know to go back and study history. Are you still there? Yeah. And these are things that need to be done. I'm a member of the NRA, okay, and I'm proud of it. And they don't, they don't condone violence. They teach you safety, how to use a gun. Teenagers are in there. Well, the problem is, um, Robert, is that, like the previous caller said, uh, I'm, I'm not sure exactly why Republicans are sitting on their hands, uh, but they are. Uh, and they're very good at it. They've had a lot of practice. Um, but they're sitting on their hands. Maybe they're waiting for the Democrats to get throw, through with the dog and pony show. Because if you're a millennial and you're listening to me, I mean, no disrespect, but this is a dog and pony show trying to use a bunch of kids. That's what it is, pure and simple. Um, nobody's got a solution. Nobody has an idea for so except that one kid that wants to get rid of automatic weapons. Somebody needs to tell him, uh, you can't walk in off the street and just buy one. And they're not, they're not accessible to the average person. As you said, um, nobody's getting the message. Nobody, where's truth? Truth should have something to do with this, but so far I haven't seen anything. All right. Um, NRA kids need to speak up. That's what uh, that's what Eric says. Well, I agree with you. Republicans at some point are going to have to say, shake it off and say, Whew, okay, I'm going to have to walk into this firestorm. Yes, you are. You want the Democrats to carry the day as they did with the black community? I don't think so. All right, 16 minutes after the hour, 416 the time. Let's go to Steve in Arlington. Steve, how you doing? Real good, Rick. How are you doing yourself? Good. Yeah, I've, I've talked to you once before, um, but uh, I just have, maybe it's overly simplistic, but when I'm hearing all these people say, well, take away this firearm for that reason or whatever, how about we just teach people don't pick the thing up and pull the trigger. Well, yeah, that is pretty simple. What do you mean? I mean, if, if well, if, if, if who is doing school shootings? Disgruntled students most of the time. Well, if they don't pick up the gun and to shoot it in the first place. They're not going to shoot anybody. If they're taught, don't shoot it. And that's what the NRA is notorious for, is teaching gun safety I mean, I remember, I mean, I'm 59 years old. When I was in school, I mean, we took gun safety classes in this public school. Well, that's, you know, that's never going to happen again because there's too, oh, many, there are too many liberals and Democrats running around uh, screaming the sky is falling because of the NRA. Um, I, don't, I don't know how you teach people that. I, I mean, I don't. I mean, I, yeah, th that's luck. Uh, 
you know, you and I both know. I was raised around guns. My every time I mm-hmm. used the restroom in my grandfather's shop, you shut the door. There's a couple long guns sitting in the corner. Nobody ever picked exactly. one up and shot somebody. I mean, in my high school, um, th- there was a gun almost in every car, either a barment rifle or a shotgun or something. Nobody ever shot anybody. You know, it's a breakdown of of society. It's not a hardware problem. It's a software problem. It's a liberal problem. And now the Democrats are going to make it a Republican problem. Uh, so what the Republicans have done by sitting on their hands um, is forgetting that millennials, as of this year, now outnumber baby boomers, and they generally, uh, under 30, vote for uh, Democrats. Why? Um, because they offer them, uh, hey, hey, little boy, want some candy? Uh, that's basically what the Democratic Party is. You just heard it from Chucky e. Schumer and Nancy Pelosi and Dick Durbin and Cory Booker. Uh, I mean, they're not, a, they're not talking about school safety. They're talking about the NRA. And the fact that we're with you and we're going to win, we're going to, but that thing with Chuck Schumer, you're going to win what? This isn't a damn contest. You know, there are no prizes given out at the end. What What are you talking about? You're going to win what? Uh, I mean, these people are so inundated with politics. Everything is a contest to them, including manipulating your kids. Um, all right. Good call. I appreciate it, Steve. Thank you. Gene in Temple, Texas. Gene, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Gene? Well, thank you. And yourself? Good. Good deal. I would be ashamed if I was so mindless that all I took for my information was a pep rally. Was you know, just put a skirt on his damn butt and a pom pom in his hand and let Schumer tell you we gonna win, we gonna win. It's it's mindless. Do something besides read a bumper sticker for your information. Get something that's that's so stupid to have nothing but a pep rally. But well, it's stupid to you and me. You. It's stupid to you and me. It's exactly what hundreds of thousands of kids turning eighteen voting age. It's exactly what they want to hear. Well, that's they need to get a life because that's just plum stupid. Well, it's it's being a kid, and we've all been one. Um, and you know. How do I, how do I, do you want to know what the Democrats are up to? I told you a while ago, it's an electoral shift from the baby boomers and the older generations toward millennials. I mean, millennials generally defined as the generation born from 1981 to 2000, they entered the electorate in the year 2000. At that point, census figures analyzed by, uh, by, Uh, states of change and look that up they represented just four percent of eligible voters baby boomers born between uh, what is it 46 and 64 they they made up nearly 10 times as many eligible voters at uh, almost 40 percent not quite 40 percent 38 39 something like that by 2016 two years ago the two generations had virtually converged. They were the same. Now the numbers showed that baby boomers represented just over 30%, maybe 31%. Millennials, about the same. In the process, millennials surged past the Generation Xers, Americans born between 65 and 80. That makes you feel old, doesn't it? They comprised about a a quarter of the eligible voters last year. Okay, look ahead to this year. You know, the States of Change Project, they they look at eligible voters. They look at the political landscape, policy implications by demographic, by ages and where they live and all that kind of thing. They forecast that uh, that'll be the last time. 2016 will be the last time baby boomers outnumber millennials, and it happens this year. Among eligible voters in 2018, what do they anticipate? They anticipate millennials at just somewhere hovering above 32% will squeeze past baby boomers at about 29%. Okay, why, why is any of this even important? Because millennials, those under 30, I mean, if you just look at what happened with Obama, 
just before the first millennials entered the electorate, you have to look and say, okay, how is this shaking out? Republican leaders, are you listening? Or are you still sitting on your hands watching uh, the Democrats pander to yet another voting block, the millennials, or the kids? Are you listening? Okay, good. Just after the millennials entered the electorate, voters under the age of 30, those 30 years old and younger, split almost evenly between the parties 18 years ago in the year 2000. That was a presidential election, the first time they took a look at those numbers. And there were two or three, I think three, congressional elections at the same time from 98 through 2002. As millennials poured into the voting booth, the youth vote has sharply turned toward Democrats. Why? Because of that crap I just played, because they're, they're pandering to them, just like they did the black communities 50 years ago. Now, it peaked with Obama's 66 support, 66% support among voters under 30 in 2008. Now, if you really don't think we have anything to worry about, like that last caller, or not the last caller, but a few callers ago, Andy, I think it was, uh, they'll forget about it in a day or two. In 2016, Hillary, I mean, she was just treading water with young voters. She was, was not doing well at all. And it was from the outset. It wasn't like, you know, somewhere down the line she started losing him. She never got him. Who got him? A doddering old socialist. A socialist. Bernie Sanders beat Hillary Clinton in the Democratic primary by a wider margin than Obama beat her in 2008. You know, if your if you're draw dropped on the floor, I can see why. And in... A lot of those millennials, not only did they love Bernie Sanders, they liked the idea of a third party during the general election. Even so, Trump carried only a little more than a third of the voters under 30. You think it was bad then? (laughs) Wait till next time. All right. Well, let's get honest about this thing. You want to? I don't know how many people are being honest about it. You know, I tried to give you, um, I'm not a newsman. We have a newsroom and some very, very overqualified people to be doing the news. I'm not a newsman. I give you the, they give you the who, what, when, and where, make up your own mind. I'm opinion driven. I have an opinion on just about everything. So I'm going to tell you what I believe to be the truth. One of the most one of the most frustrating and some would even say heart breaking aspects of this Florida school shooting is just how many red flags there were surrounding the shooter. The national debate, of course, uh, it's being led by the kids and they're being led by the Democrats. You know, it's mostly revolved around the NRA and guns. Neither one of those things have anything to do with school shootings. You know, a lot of ink has also been uh, spilled about the failed leadership of the sheriff's uh, office in that moment of crisis. You know, we'll let them sort that out. It looks like they've got some, uh, some tweaking to do. What's been lost in this whole discussion are the issues of school safety and discipline. I know that's a dirty word now, discipline. Oh, my God, you mean beating your kids? No, that's not what I'm talking about. Uh, But those issues are extremely relevant to this school shooting. You know, prior to this mass shooting, Nicholas Cruz was involved in a huge number of incidents, both uh, at school and at home. And in other areas. A lot of calls were made to the police. I think at one point the FBI was even involved. I know they were. He certainly had all the earmarks of what? A ticking time bomb. It would seem that somewhere, somehow, along the way, he should have been stopped before he shot and killed 17 students. 
That wasn't the case, obviously. There's a guy at the Manhattan Institute, uh, Eden, I think is his last name. He explained in a City Journal piece how, forgive me, if you're an Obama fan, you don't want to hear this, but uh, it was a Barack Obama-era Department of Education initiative designed to what? Its sole purpose was to put an end to the school-to-prison pipeline. Too many people of color were going from school to prison. You combine that with local mismanagement, and that helped the shooter fall through the cracks. I said helped. In 2013, the school board and the sheriff's office agreed on a new policy to discontinue police referrals for a dozen infractions, ranging from drug use to assault. This was Obama's way to stop the school-to-prison pipeline for students of color. A separate report found that the Broward County was part of a vanguard of a strategy adopted by more than 50 other major school districts nationwide. I would hope those other 50 school districts are taking another look. It allowed thousands, not 20 or 50 or 100 or 500, thousands upon thousands of troubled, often violent students to commit crimes without anybody being called, without any kind of legal consequence, because Barack Obama was trying to find a way to stop they go from school to prison pipeline. You know, this was part of a larger Obama administration effort. It was launched in 2010 or 2011, doesn't matter which one it was, it was launched, to reduce racial disparities in school discipline numbers. Listen to what I'm saying. Is racism bad? Of course it is. But overreacting and not reacting is even worse. This new Obama administration effort to reduce racial disparity in school discipline numbers, students charged with various misdemeanors, including assault, would now be disciplined through participation in healing circles, obstacle courses, and other what they called self-esteem building exercises. What's that? You punch this kid, broke his nose, knocked out a couple teeth, Well, we're not going to call the cops, but we're going to need you to go to the healing circle and then run an obstacle course because somehow that's going to bring back your self-esteem. We must ensure that school discipline is being handled by trained educators, not by law enforcement officers. That was Secretary of Education John King two years ago, I think. Some schools are simply turning misbehaving students over to school resource officers, and that can set students on a path to dropping out or even prison. Florida's Broward County, which is where uh, that high school is, was the leader in adopting this new program, even touted for it by former Education Secretary Duncan. The number of school arrests dropped dramatically, as you might imagine. If you've got a list of 50 things that you can no longer call the cops on a kid for, then I would imagine the arrests would drop. In the years that followed, um, they kept dropping. But that didn't mean that serious crime stopped. Just the arrest. The Parkland shooter was involved in a number of these incidents. Assault bringing bullets to campus, for which he eventually uh, was moved to another school. Yet the police were never called, never arrested the shooter, never expelled him, which is in part why he passed a federal background check and was able to buy a gun in the first place. The red flags swirling around this kid basically were ignored. And it appears that Broward County's lax policies, forgive me, but they deserve some of the blame. Not for shooting the kids, but 
preventing it. You know, it's worth uh, looking at that there have been many problems with the zero tolerance uh, policy, which became common in, I think, the 1990s, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, These policies, which Congress designed in part to make school campuses gun-free zones. All right, all those kids that are wanting Washington to make them safe, help us out, they tried in the 90s. They made you a gun-free zone. All that did was say the bad guys wouldn't uh, encounter any pushback. That sound like a good idea? Republican leadership, are you putting that message out there? Or are you just content to let the Democrats manipulate, choreograph, and abuse these kids? As long as they get the vote, they don't care. Hmm. You know, criminalized behavior that was innocuous and that certainly didn't require police involvement, no arrest, because God forbid this kid drop out of school before he kills somebody or goes to prison. That's exactly what Barack Obama was was stopping. You know, maybe had he followed through with my brother's keeper, brought jobs to the black community, improved the schools in the black community, given the black community an equal chance at everything that everybody else had, instead of just promising them things and never following through for 50 years, maybe you wouldn't have so many kids that were just out of their minds. And you wouldn't need a program like this. Now, this shooter was white. Didn't matter. The program that was designed for kids of color applied to everyone. White, black, Hispanic, Asian, didn't matter. Bad kids were getting a pass. You know, in dealing with campus policing practices, it's also important not to overreact to problems that create new problems. I get that. Zero tolerance policies come with their own complications. There is no single policy or idea that can solve the school discipline and school shooter problem overnight. That's not going to happen. But it's not unreasonable to expect a department to change its practices after such a catastrophic failure as we saw in Parkland. With all due respect, former President Obama, your pathetic let them go policy didn't work. And it doesn't work. You know that by raising your own kids. I would hope. Uh, I'm getting angry, aren't I? 4.42 the time. I'm Rick Roberts. News Talk 820 WBAP. All right, uh, 4.47 the time. Got a lot of people saying, man, you were really rough on Hillary yesterday. (laughs) Really? Was I? (laughs) <laughs> well, let me see. A list of everyone and everything Hillary Clinton has blamed her election loss on. Um, I, she blamed her loss on the FBI, James Covey, F, uh, Comey, the FBI director, the Russians, Vladimir Putin, anti-American forces, law and infor, excuse me, low information voters, you deplorables, everyone who assumed she'd win, Uh, Hurt her. (laughs) Bad polling numbers. Obama for winning two terms. People wanting change. Misogynists. Suburban women. The New York Times. Television executives. Cable news. Netflix. um, Democrats not making the right documentaries, evidently. Facebook, Twitter, WikiLeaks, fake news, content farms from Macedonia. The Republican Party. The Democrat Party. Unbelievable. What and about I, Bill Clinton? No, she didn't. Well, no, she didn't do no, that. Okay. You know, that's, that's her, that's her ace in the hole. hole. Exactly. Um, you know, here's the problem. You know, how many times have you said, man, I just wish she would go away? You know, just go away, Hillary. Just walk away. You know, she claimed most recently, and I talked about it yesterday, she lost because white women didn't stand up to the men in their lives that convinced them to vote for Trump. Um, You know, but let's be honest. Let's be very honest about this. Um, I want her to go away. Republicans talk about Clinton incessantly. Remember how long it took to get rid of Bill Clinton out of the public discourse? 
Trump has tweeted about Hillary 91 times since he's been in office. You know, Republicans talk about how Clinton just needs to go away, but it's a joke. Because they won't stop talking about her. I didn't stop for two hours yesterday. She noted that Trump uh, tweeted 91 times since he defeated her. This was not before, this was not the campaign. This was after he won. He tweeted about Clinton 91 times. Um, you know, it's not just Republicans who want Clinton to take a step back. Democrats want Clinton to take a step back. Um, well, her 2008 campaign manager, uh, Patty Doyle, I think she was. Anyway, um, Doyle criticized Hillary's remarks about Americans who didn't vote for her. Now, here's a good political speak. She didn't say, what an idiot. Don't say that. You know, a huge mistake. Oh, man. You know, you're killing yourself. She didn't say that. In in polite Democratic uh, company, you say, I think the remarks were unfortunate. Unfortunate? Okay. Um, it seems to me she's still, you know, struggling with coming to terms on how she lost and why she lost, which, you know, you got to work on that, is human and normal, especially especially this level of loss. But I do wish she would stop doing it so publicly. I mean, that's her former campaign manager. Yeah, well, you know, those uh, those uh, white women barefoot and pregnant making the old man gravy before he gets home, uh, they just didn't know what to do, so they listened to their husbands. I mean, Hillary has alienated herself with everyone, Every, even Democrats. I don't, you know, I, I was thinking last night after I did the show, and I was going through this list of excuses, I was thinking last night, what would be a good position for Hillary? I mean, she, all she ever has ever done is politics. She didn't know how to do anything else. I mean, I, I guess she could go to a trade school, you know, and learn HVAC or, uh, I don't know, electrical wiring or, or something. But what what could Hillary do? It's sort of like... It's sort of like when um, the original housekeeper on Andy Griffith got married and moved to Ray, and then Aunt B came and Opie didn't like her, and then she starts to leave, and he goes, but Pa, she's got to stay. She doesn't know how to do anything else. I mean, that's true. That's Hillary. Hillary Clinton is Aunt B. <laughs> she, she's helpless. What a she terrible thing to say about Aunt she, B. She, she can't fish she can't play ball she's helpless aunt b i don't know what she would do yeah first woman on the moon first woman on the moon i'll well, see i think she's got some health issues i don't i think that would preclude her from uh from going well there's not as much gravity on the moon so. well not just getting there i think it'd be tough for her. um but i i don't know what you do when you've been a professional politician your entire life You've either screwed over or threw the under the bus everybody you've ever met. She's uh, done that. And your husband's bill. I, I mean, and he looks, he's starting to look scary. He looks old. Uh, I mean, we're all going to get there, but I mean, he something's not right there. Um, and I can't, I can't think they have an Ozzy and Harriet type relationship anyway. Oh, honey, you're home. And run up and give him a kid. I don't think it works that way there. I don't know. Um, but what is she going to do? If she can't get back into politics, Democrats don't want her. Republicans won't stop talking about her. I guess that includes me. So what does she do next? Maybe she, maybe she, uh, maybe she does a, a one-woman show and tour across the country. Lily Tomlin did that, yes. Reality TV. She's going to replace Trump on who, reality TV. Who would watch Hillary? I don't know, but you, we're just throwing it out there, right? It's an idea. Hmm, reality TV. She and Sarah Palin could do Thelma and Louise. I'll oh, see people would tune in to watch Sarah Palin because <laughs> you never know what she's going to say. Um, you could probably come up with a script for a Hillary show. Uh, hmm, what are you going to do with Hillary? I don't know, but she is she has sealed sealed her fate. There's there's no doubt about it. So uh, even the Democratic um, campaign manager said, "Please, please stop. Just please." So. People 50 years from now will go, 
Hmm. Hillary Clinton. Let's read about her. Evidently, she was very controversial. Um, I don't know what she's going to do. Uh, she should have enough money for her. She doesn't have to do anything, right? One would think. You'd think so. I hope uh, so. I mean, how much do you get for plutonium these days? Should get quite a bit, I think. All right. Maybe uh, Chelsea has it. Yeah, Chelsea. She's going to live vicariously through Chelsea. She's going to be the new dance mom. That's what she's going to be. See, we figured it out. I figured it out. You know, it's like my grandfather always said, if you keep talking long enough, you'll finally uh, find a way through it. There you go. Hillary Clinton, also known as Aunt B, the new dance mom, Thursday at 9 o'clock. All right, I'm, uh, I'm through. God's blessings to each and every one of you. Whether we agree or not, stick around. Mark Levin is next. I'll be back with you tomorrow at 2, your afternoon drive. Rick Roberts, the Court of Public Opinion on News Talk 820 WBAP. Hey, I know. I'll get out of